Hello and welcome to my Pilates class for runners. This is a mat work class, so there's no um, equipment required, just your body weight. Um, as a runner myself, I know um, how beneficial Pilates can be to help uh, with your running efficiency, um, injury prevention and, and improving your performance. So this class is going to focus on a few um, particular areas that we need for our running. So your anterior chain to help with your trunk stability, your posterior chain to help with your push off and your forward propulsion. Um, and of course your lateral chain to help with that single leg stability. Um, we'll also throw in a few mobility exercises, so helping with your thoracic mobility, um, hip flexor tightness and um, calf tightness. So try and listen to the cues, try and follow um, what I'm saying, try and think about what you're doing, make it a mindful exercise session and most importantly enjoy. We'll start on our hands and knees, so a four point kneeling position, um, just with a nice gentle cat and cow stretch. So place your hands onto the ground underneath your shoulders and just start by tucking your pelvis under, pull the pubic bone towards the belly button, round your spine, look between your legs and then dip your pelvis down, tip your gaze forwards and open your chest. And again, tuck your pelvis under, Round the spine, press your chest away from the ground, pull the belly upwards, and then tip the pelvis, look forwards, and open your chest. One more time, let's tuck under, round the spine, pressing the chest away from the ground, actively pulling your stomach in, and then sink down, still pushing the ground away. Try not to let the shoulders sag. And then come to a neutral position. We're now moving into some rotation, threading the needle. So slide your right arm underneath your left, turn your chest and feel that stretch around your thoracic spine. Come back through centre and then reach that right hand to the ceiling. Back underneath, stretch it through, slide your hand away. See if you can get your shoulder a little closer to the ground this time. And then back towards the ceiling, open the other way. One more time, slide under, stretch, maybe rest your shoulder on the ground this time, and then come up. Rest that hand down and let's do the other side, slide the left hand under the right. And then reach your hand towards the ceiling, opening the chest the other way, again pressing through your palm. Slide under, and then reach up. And we'll do one more of these before we get into our strengthening work. Reaching up to the ceiling and then bring that hand down onto the mat. So we're going to start with some anterior oblique sling work here. So I want you to press your palms firmly into the ground through the heels of your hands and then notice that your knees are directed down to your hips. If we press our right palm even more firmly into the ground, you should feel that your left knee becomes a little heavier and your right knee becomes a little lighter. And from there, we slide that left foot backwards along the floor. Squeeze through the right body, but keep your toes on the ground. Slide your leg back in. I want you to feel that there's absolutely no movement of your body here. Try and feel a connection between that right root and the left hip. We're going to take our left hand onto our back now to feel that the pelvis doesn't move. So everything stays nice and still. Just resting the left hand on your lower back there. Let's slide the right leg out one more time and hold. Lift your leg up off the ground now and then tap it back down and lift and tap and lift. So the leg doesn't have to go high. What I want you to feel for here is that there's a squeeze in that right buttock. There's no movement across your lower back and pelvis where your left hand is resting and then go active through the front of your stomach wall to help keep your stomach muscles switched on. Let's do another three here. Two, one more, lift and hold. Now reach your left arm out in front of you. Stay here for a moment, and then we're gonna tuck the knee towards the elbow underneath you, really starting to key into that anterior chain. And then stretch back out away from you. Tuck in, elbow to knee, and then stretch out long. Let's do six more here. 
tuck in, tap the elbow towards the knee, feel that squeeze through your stomach muscles as you do that, and then stretch back out long. For another five, and stretch. Four more, squeezing that right glute every time you stretch out. Three, good, two more. Tap, and stretch your nice and strong through your right shoulder here. One more time, tap, and then stretch out, hold here. Little pulses through the arm and the leg up towards the ceiling. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest, well done. Give your shoulders a little roll out there. Very nice. So keep your hands where they are. Slide your right leg out behind you. Curl up onto your toes. And then stretch your left leg out as well. Coming into our full plank position. Pressing through the heels of your hands. We're going to bend the knees and sink our chest back towards our thighs. Bend your knees. Press your chest towards your thighs. Feel that stretch around your shoulders. And then come back to your plank. We're doing that three times. I want a nice strong plank in between each, each press back. So knees bend, chest goes towards the thigh, hold a move, and then back into your plank and hold. One more time, press back, and then come forwards into your plank and hold here. So a little bit of a progression of the four point kneeling exercise we just did. Still working on that anterior oblique sling. Let's tap the right knee towards the right elbow. Tuck it in, tap and hold, and then step it back. We're just working the right leg. Tap the right knee to the right elbow again. Pause, and then step it back. One more time, right knee to the right elbow. Pause, and step back. This time we're gonna go right knee to the left elbow. So let's tuck it forwards, feel your hips twist, and then step it back. You should be really feeling the stomach muscles do the work here to pull the knee forwards. One more time, right knee to left elbow. And step it back. Let's add the two together. We'll go right knee, right elbow. Right knee, left elbow. And step back. Then again, right knee, right elbow. Right knee, left elbow. And step it back. One more time. Right knee, right elbow. Right knee, left elbow. Step it back. Press your hips towards the ceiling, open your chest, and push your chest towards your thighs. Let's pedal our legs. Pedal in and out there. And then we're going to come into a hip flexor stretch. So let's find our plank one more time. This time step your left foot forward between your hands, and let your right knee come down. We're going to stretch out the right hip. Place your hands behind your head. Tuck your pelvis under, pull your pubic bone towards your belly button, and now tip your left elbow towards the floor, right elbow towards the ceiling, and hold. Come back to the middle. Let's turn our chest to the left, opening the front of that right hip, hold, and come back through the middle. Let's deepen those stretches. Left elbow to the floor, right elbow to the ceiling, and then we're going to reach Left elbow to the left hand to the floor and right hand to the ceiling. Feel a deeper stretch all through the side of your body. Hands back behind your head, straighten up. Let's turn to the left, feel that rotation. Open the arms wide. Hold here, we're going to combine those two stretches. Reach your left hand to the back of your right thigh and your right hand over your head. And now you should feel it really. Nice deep stretch through the front of that right thigh. Let's hold here for a big breath in and out. And then carefully come up out of that stretch. Right hand to the floor. Straighten your right knee. Left hand to the ceiling and hold. That should feel quite nice through the front of the right thigh and the back of the left hip. Let's bring that right hand back to the floor. Hover your left knee off the ground and step it back. Full plank. And let's press back for a little downward dog. Pedal out the legs. Press the chest back towards the knees. Come forward into your plank. And then lower your knees down for our left side. So pressing the palms into the floor once again. Belly button to spine. This time let's press our left knee. Sorry, our left palm firmly into the ground. 
feel that the right knee gets a little heavier when you do that and the left knee gets a little lighter. Let's slide the left foot back and then slide it in. Slide it back and then slide it in. We're going to take the right hand onto the back of the hips or pelvis and then slide. Really work on keeping your body still here. The only thing moving is that left leg. Let's slide it one more time. Hold and then we'll lift and tap and lift and tap. So we're feeling the left buttock squeeze this time. The lift comes from your hip. Try and keep your knee really straight. So we don't want to be bending the knee. We want to keep that knee straight so that the lift comes from your hip. Squeeze through your body muscle. Let's do another five. Think of engaging through the stomach ball. Four. Three. Two. One more time. Lift and hold. Reach the right arm out in front of you. Let's tap knee to elbow. Use the tummy and then stretch it out. Knee to elbow and stretch. We've got another six here. Left shoulder nice and strong. Reach long between each tap. And then when you tap, really picture your rib and your hip coming towards each other from the opposite sides. Right rib to left hip. Let's go three. And stretch. Two. And stretch one more time. Tuck in. Stretch out and hold. Little pulses through the arm and the leg. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And down. Knee down, roll the shoulders out. Coming into our plank, let's step the right leg back. Tuck the pelvis under, strengthen through the stomach muscles. Step the left foot back. Hold that plank. When you're ready, let's tap left knee to left elbow. And step it back. And again, left knee to left elbow. And step it back. One more time, tuck, pause, and step back. Let's go left knee to right elbow, and back. For three, two, one more tuck in, step back. Let's combine with your left knee, left elbow, left knee, right elbow, and back. And again, left to left, left to right, and back. One more time. Left to left, left to right, step it back, push away, down with dog, give your shoulders a break. Pedal your legs out, that should feel a little, little better, a little freer than the first one did. A little more mobility around those ankles and calves. Let's come forward into our plank, hold here. This time we're stepping the right foot forward and lowering the left knee down. Coming up from there into that lunge position, tuck the pubic bone to belly button. Take your hands behind your head and reach your right elbow to the floor, left elbow to the ceiling. Find that stretch through the front of the left hip area. Hold and then straighten up. Then we turn the chest. Turn away, rotate, hold. Come back through the center, let's deepen that stretch. Right elbow to the floor, left elbow to the ceiling. Left hand to the ceiling, right hand to the floor. Back to the middle and then rotate. Feel that rotation through your spine, open the arms wide. And then right hand to the back of the left thigh, left hand to the ceiling, opening up the front of that left hip. Let's hold here for a big breath in. And out. Coming out with that stretch, left hand to the floor, straighten. The left leg and reach your right hand to the ceiling. Open the chest. Bring your right hand down to the floor. One last time, press through the palms, find that plank, bend the knees, push your hips to the ceiling and then pedal your legs. Lower the knees down and come onto your side. We're going to be lying down on our right side to begin with. Head resting on your arm, left hand on your hip. Have your right leg bent, so your bottom leg is bent. Have a space under your waist. Start by pushing your left hip away from your rib. 
to create that gap underneath your right waist. Have a look at your hips, check you're not rolling backwards. If you're square, your knees should be perfectly stacked and your hips should be perfectly stacked as well. Let's start by stretching our left leg out long. Reach it away, stretch it out and point the toes. From here, we're just gonna tap the floor and lift. Just 10 of these, tap the floor and lift. Just to get the hang of it, I want you to feel that your effort is in the side of your left buttock, not the front. And you may need to have a little glimpse down at your leg and check that your foot's not coming forwards. Let's tap and lift for another five, four. As your leg lifts, check that your waist isn't shrinking. So that pelvis and that hip bone is staying exactly where it is. Two, one more lift and hold. From here, we're coming into a side kick. So flex your foot, pull your toes towards you, wave your foot forwards, and then point your toes, sweep your foot back. Very good. Flex the foot, sweep your leg forwards, point the toes and sweep your leg back. When you're doing this exercise, you should still feel with your left hand that there is absolutely no movement from above your hip joint. So we're working on keeping our torsos nice and stable here whilst we move through our leg, which is, surprise, surprise, what happens when you run. Let's do five more of these before we change this exercise slightly. We're also getting our ankles involved here. So a bit of control around what happens at your ankle. When you run, your toes pull up towards you through your swing phase. And obviously when you push away from the ground, there's a bit of a point in the toes. Let's go for three. Two more here. Two. One more time, starting to feel that left glute warm up. Now bring your leg in line with your body, flex your toes. Let's bend the knee, bring it forwards. Straighten it back out. Bend it forwards and then straighten it back out. Just three more of these and then we combine those two movements. Three, still long through the waist. Two, you can think of engaging a little bit through your abdominals here as well to help keep you stable. One more. All right, let's combo. So bend your knee forwards, straighten your leg out, point your toes to sweep it back. Flat foot, we bend. Straighten and sweep. Good, six to go. Flat foot bends, flat foot straightens and then toes point to sweep back. Flex, straighten, point as you sweep back. Three, very nice, and back. Two more, bottom leg should be really relaxed. All that effort should be in this top leg and your abdominals. One more, flex it, straighten it, point to sweep back and rest. Give that a little run. We're gonna come into a side plank now for some more hip abduction work. When we're in our side planks, we get the double whammy bonus of working the underneath glute and the top glute and the obliques. So start by pushing through your elbow, lift your chest away from the ground. Press up onto your knees, stretch your left leg out. Hold here, raise your leg and lower it. Up and down. Let's go for eight. Lifting through that bottom glute. Seven, six, hips are square. Five, four, toes are pointed. Three, lightly tapping the ground. Two. One more, lift and hold. Let's pulse here just for five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Well done, lie down on your side. Let's have a stretch. Tuck your knees up towards you, straighten your bottom leg out, and then open your left arm overhead and feel that stretch. You can grab onto your right knee with your right hand if you need to. Let's hold here before we move into our bridges. So, rolling onto your back. Now we're looking more at our posterior chain. So our glutes and our lats that work together on opposite sides of the body. So, have a little feel that you can reach your heels. I want your feet very much hip width apart from this. So fairly narrow, not, not a wide stance, a fairly narrow stance. Place your hands by your sides, press them down into the ground. 
Tuck your pelvis under, round your lower back, and then press your hips to the ceiling. Once your hips are lifted, have a look and check that your ribs are pressing down. So it's not a big arch in the back, it's, it's an active pull through the stomach muscles and push through the buttock muscles. At the moment, your weight is mostly on your heels. Let's roll back down, bone by bone, and then roll up again. Tuck the pelvis under, pull the pubic bone to the belly button, press through the heels, and roll up. Inhale, hold. Exhale, roll down. Good. Let's go one more time. Roll up, tuck the bottom in. Squeeze through the body muscles, press your hips to the ceiling, hold here. We're keeping our hips raised now for quite a long set. I get you to lower, uh, sorry, lift your heels and then lower your heels back down. Lift and lower. Keep active through the front here. Think of a couple of springs pulling your ribs towards your hips. This is important when we run. We can often fall into what's called an anterior pelvic tilt, where your tailbone is sort of sticking out too much behind you and that creates tension in your hip flexors. And that can lead to not only hip flexor tightness, but also pain across the front of the knee in the patellofemoral joint. As you're lifting your heels, I want you to try and think of pressing down through your big toe. So we don't want the ankles rolling outwards. We want to get our, most of our drive straight across our big toe. Let's do another two. One more, lift your heels and hold. Keep your heels raised for a moment. Check that your ribs are still drawing towards your hips. Let's lower the right heel only and then lift it back up. Left heel only and lift it back up. Keep alternating, tap and lift, tap and lift. Have a look at your hips. Can you do this without lowering your hips at all? So no twist through the pelvis, everything is squared. The movement is coming from below the hips. Let's go for another three on each side. Keep breathing. Two more each side. Keep squeezing those glutes. Mine are on fire. One more for each side. And now lower your heels, but stay lifted through your hips. So we were just working our left lateral sling when we were lying on our side. We're now going to combine a bit of hip extension with that hip abduction by raising the right foot off the ground. Raise your leg, point to the ceiling. Point your toes as you lower your foot down. Flex your foot as you lift it up. Let's go for four more of these. Left glute should be burning. Three. Ribs are drawing in. Two. One more, one, point your foot at the ceiling, press your hips a little higher, let's hold five, four, three, two, one, foot comes down, and then let's roll down with control. Well done. Hug your knees to your chest. Give a quick rock side to side. And then we're going to roll all the way up to sitting, <coughs> and switch sides. So lay down on your left side now. Definitely felt that in my left butt. Um, and rest your head on your left arm. So let's start by getting ourselves into position. Hips stacked directly on top of each other. Knees stacked directly on top of each other. A little gap under the left waist so it pushed the right hip away from us. When you're ready, stretch your right leg out long, point into your toes. Keep your hips square, don't let that top hip roll backwards. Let's tap the floor and lift, tap, and lift. Doesn't have to go high, just a little higher than your hip level, but not so high that your body starts to move because of it. So we're thinking of using our stomach muscles here, and then that lateral glute is what's creating the movement. Let's go for two, one, lift and hold. Flex your foot, pull your toes towards you, wave your foot forward, Point your toes as you the back. Wave the foot forwards and then point to sweep back. And if you're finding the ankle stuff challenging, the control of it, don't worry, it will take some practice. But the more control you have over every part of your body, obviously the more efficient you can be with your movements. So everything can start to become automatic the way it is 
designed to be. Let's go for another four here before we move to our knee bends. Three, and point. Two more, remember you're using your pelvic floor here, using your tummy muscles so that your hips aren't wobbling all around. Last one of these, let's pull back, now flex the foot, bend your knee forwards, and then straighten it back out. Bend forwards and straighten out. And three more of these, and remember the aim of the game here is to keep your whole leg at the same level as your hip. So you can imagine like you're lying down um, with your leg resting on the coffee table and you're just sort of sliding it across the top of the coffee table. Let's straighten the leg out, hold it there. Tundra combo, push that hip away, bend your knee, straighten it out and then point your toes as you speed back. Flex the foot, bend, straighten, point to speed back. And again, bend, straighten, point to speed back. Let's go for our last five. Good. Four. Check you've still got your gap under your waist. Last three. Two. And last one. Let's bend, straighten, and sweep it back. Well done. Rest that down. Give it a little rub. Come onto your left elbow. Push your chest away from the ground. Let's press up onto our knees, stretch that right leg out, and tap. Seven, six more here, lifting from that underneath waist, squeezing that underneath glute as well. These are tough, four, three to go before we pulse, two, lift and hold, just five more pulses, four, three, two, one, come down from there, well done. Bend that right knee up in front of you. Rest down. Grab onto your right knee with your left hand and open your right elbow back behind you. You can experiment with where that leg goes. You'll feel slightly different stretches depending on the angle. And just hold that stretch before we roll into our bridges. So rolling onto your back again. Let's set up the same as we did for the other side. We want to be able to feel our heels with our fingers if you've got the flexibility for it. If not, pop your feet wherever you can. Don't, don't feel too much tension over your knees. And make sure your feet are not too wide apart or you'll really struggle with that single leg bridge at the end. So once again, let's tuck the pelvis under, press through the heels, push your hips towards the ceiling, feel an even pull through the stomach and push through the body. Hold it when you get to the top, hands are pressing down against the floor. Let's keep our stomach muscles engaged as we lift the heels up and down, pressing through those big toes, still squeezing through the body and making sure that our ankles are nice and stable. You might feel a slight difference side to side, like one's wobblier or one seems to lift more easily. Um, and that, pay attention to that because you might notice when we do our standing work that you're more or less stable on one side as well. Let's do two more. One more, lift and hold. Let's have a look at our ribs. Check the ribs are drawing in. Check the pelvis is level and we're ready. To tuck one hand, oops, sorry, one heel, and then the other. Tuck, lift, tuck, lift. Think about that big toe, press through it. Think about those springs connecting the ribs towards the hips. Think about your lower back being relaxed, like you're trying to scoop your belly under to the point where your back muscles are, are relaxed and it's all in your body, kind of a thigh. Let's do another two. One more each side. Good, well done. Pop the heels down. So we worked our right glute just then. We're going to lift our left foot, squeeze through the right leg, lift the left foot to the ceiling. And then we wave that foot down with the toes pointed, flex to lift up, point to wave down, flex to lift up. Three more, right foot on fire. Two. One more, let's point the foot to the ceiling, hold it there, lift a little higher, hold five, four, three, two, one. Heel down, roll down, hug the knees to the chest. 
Well done. So let's keep the backs of our legs a little stretch after that. Um, it's predominantly glutes, but you'll definitely feel your hamstrings working a little bit with that exercise. Can we grab the back of the right thigh, stretch the left leg out, pull the knee towards you slightly, and just draw some circles with your ankle. Let's do five one way, and now back the other way. For another five, three, two, one. Swap legs, right leg to the floor. Pull the hands behind your left leg, let's circle for another three, two, one, back the other way for five, four, three, two, one. Keep hold of the back of that left leg. Start to peel forwards through your upper body and walk your hands up towards your calf. Hold here for a moment, we're going to do two little tugs and then we swap legs. Two little tugs and swap. Tug, tug, good, swap. Pulse, pulse, and swap. Feeling that nice stretch down the backs of your legs. We're going to need that for our arabesques. Let's go for another five here. Four, three, two, and one. Hold here. Point that left leg nice and long. Bend the right knee to tabletop. Hands behind your head, and let's alternate our leg extension. Eight, seven, six. So while you're doing this exercise, three, two, one. I want you to think about the length of the straight leg. Reach it in away from you and think about your neutral pelvis. Hold here, let's lower the head and lift for five, four, three, two more. Lift and hold for our next set. We've got the option of adding our ankle mobility in. So we're going to flex as we pull in, point as we, as we push out. Flex to pull in, point to push out. Let's go for another six, five, four, three, two, one. Sorry, one more. And hold here. And five crunches there. Five. Four, three, just two more. Two, and one. Hug those knees in towards you. And now we're going to rock and roll our way up to sitting or standing. So start to gather some momentum. Roll up and down. Try not to hit your feet onto the floor until the last one where we actually stand all the way up. So let's go roll. Feet come down and we stand all the way up. Well done. So we'll be working on some standing work now. Arabesques, lunges, um, and that's about it. So let's turn onto the side. Find your balance. Let's start with our left leg. So ground your foot through, through the floor. Really focus on that big toe here. And then bring your right knee up towards your chest. I want you to try and access some of the muscles we've already switched on today. So think of engaging through the front of your stomach wall and think of engaging through that left lateral glute area. Hands behind your side. We're going to start with our arabesque. So we fold over nice and slowly, reach the right leg back behind and reach both legs out in front. And then press the arms back down, bring the right leg up in front of you. Well done. Keep going. So as we fold forward, See if you can remember how it felt when you were on your hands and knees and we were really switching on that cross-sectional sling of muscles from the opposite rib to the opposite hip. So right now, see if you can switch on right rib, left hip, left rib, right hip. And then press through that left foot, use your left buttock and bring yourself up tall again. Another good trick with these exercises is to imagine that you're not standing in air, but something a little thicker like honey. And so as you move yourself forwards and back, feel like you're actually creating resistance to that movement. And I swear that helps you with your stability. Let's go two more of these. Fold forward, reach out. That left knee is soft. It's not a squat, but it's, it's not a stiff knee. One more time, fold over. Reach forward, 
pop your right foot down. Now, we're coming into a bit of a step up sequence. So let's bring our hands by our sides. We're going to bring the right knee forward, left hand forward. And then we're going to fold over again, right hand comes forward as the right foot taps the ground. Fold up, and then tap back. So we've got our running arms going. I want you to think of really pushing that left foot into the ground. Press yourself up, and then fold back. Let's go for five, and fold. Four, fold. Three, fold. We've got two to go. Two, one more time. Step it back, hold here. Ground yourself through that right foot. We lift the left heel up and down just for eight. Seven, press through that big toe. Six, five, think of using your stomach. Four, using just about everything right now. Two, one, press through the heel, come up one last time and hold. Make sure you've got your balance. Well done, right foot toes down. Let's shake it out. Really good. We'll do the other side, let's turn around. Find your balance on your right leg. Raise your left foot up in front of you. Think stomach, think glute. Give more space. All right, so let's fold over, reach the arms forward. Find that connection through the front and through the back of your body. Remember, it's like you're moving through honey. Create your own resistance and lift. Now that we're working on our balance in standing, do you notice a difference between your ankles? Maybe the ankle that struggled a little bit with those heel lifts or with the flexing and pointing control is actually a little less stable. Maybe not. It's worth noting. Maybe if you found one bridge a little weaker than the other in terms of your hip stability, maybe that side's a little less stable. Fold over, maybe you're perfectly symmetrical. And back up. Let's go three more times. Fold, squeeze through that left glute and back up. This is like we're putting all the exercises we've just done together into one very dynamic and very difficult exercise. Let's fold over, hold, tap your left foot down. Bring your hands by your sides. We bring left knee up, right hand, and then we fold back. And we're just very lightly tapping the ground with those toes. It's almost like you're not putting any weight on the back leg at all. But you just do for a little bit of support. Really press the ground away through your right foot. Push yourself up and back. Don't think of pulling through the left leg. Think of pushing through the right leg. Let's go for three. And tap. Two. And tap one more time. Let's tap back. Hold. Little heel lifts with the right heel up and down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one more. And then press through that heel, come up. Find your balance. Make sure you've got it. And then pop that left foot down. Shake out your legs, let's roll forwards. Round the spine. Fingertips to the floor. Feel that stretch down the backs of your legs. Soften into one leg at a time and feel that the straight leg gets the deeper stretch. And then press your hands firmly on the floor. Step one leg back and then the other. Last little plank, let's hold it here. Tuck the pelvis under, lift one leg at a time, keeping the knees straight. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower. Squeeze that glute. We've done plenty of glute squeezing. Let's just go for six, five, and then we stretch. Four, three, two, last one. Foot down. Bring your right knee towards your right elbow, your right ankle towards your left, and then come down into our pigeon stretch. Start up on your hands. Elbows are straight and the stretch should be in your right hip and buttock area. Let's stay nice and tall through the chest. Catch your breath. 
Come down onto your elbows if you feel like you've got that space available. Try not to roll around here, so see if you can feel that your weight is resting right on top of your left kneecap, so that you know everything's nice and square. If you want more of a stretch, you can bring your forehead to the floor and hold there. Or you can stay in either of the previous options I gave you. Whatever is more comfortable to you. Let's hold for a little bit longer, letting our breath come down to a more normal rate. And then bring your hands a little closer to your body. Curl your left toes under, press up through your arms, step your right foot back, bring your left knee forward into that same stretch position. Lower the right foot down and start to sink into that stretch. Stay lifted through your chest to begin with. Try not to rush forward. I find that um, if you move too quickly and you don't actually have the flexibility, you'll end up just rounding your back or stretching somewhere else. Whereas right now we want to focus on the front of the side of the hip, the left hip. So let's go down to our elbows if you feel comfortable and hold there. Catching the breath, mine's still, I'm still a little puffed, heart rate's still a little up. And then if you feel like you want to, go a little further, bring your forehead to the floor or the backs of your hands and hold here. Whichever position you feel most comfortable in, let's keep holding. We'll take three more breaths in and out. And then we're gonna finish with one last stretch, one of my favorite stretches. Jury's probably out as to how enjoyable this last stretch is, but it's a good one. Curl your right toes under, press through your palms, bring that leg out, come down onto your knees. So, I'll show you this one side on. Curl your toes under. Have your toes nice and flat so that when you sit back on your heels, you can feel your weight resting on the balls of your feet. Make sure you curl your, untuck your pinkies in case they get tucked under. And then we just sit here. So it's nice and easy, but this is a really good stretch for the um, connective tissue that sits in the arches of your feet. It's the plantar fascia. And when we run, we're giving the pavement time and time again, um, and then we often don't stretch that area, and then we go to work or go walking or do whatever else we do in our day. This part of our body often doesn't get a whole lot of TLC. Um, but also not a whole lot of variety in the way that it moves. So that's when it can start to get stiff and, and uh, become a little bit restricted um, or potentially very painful. So this stretch should be starting to get a little bit less comfortable. Um, like you're starting to want to get out of the stretch and according to the yin um, yogi practice, you're not really in the stretch until you want to get out of it. So let's just hold it for a little bit longer. Think about your posture here. So ribs are sitting directly above the pelvis, collarbones are broad, there's no flare in the ribs. And the cue for your head and neck, you can think about your head being a helium balloon just floating up towards the ceiling. So there's sort of a lightness to it and an elongation through the spine. My toes are starting to get a little bit sore. Let's try and hold this for another 10 seconds and then we'll come out of this stretch. Breathing through it for another five, four, three, two, one. Well done. Hands back to the mat. Kick your toes out. Press them against the floor. And then we are all done. So I hope you enjoyed that class. Um, of course, there's so many other exercises you can do in Pilates that are beneficial for running. I'm going to post another sequence that is more of a um, post-run stretch, uh, and then I'll do another one that's more of a pre-run activation. But this is just a good one to do uh, on the days that you're not running um, to build up some strength and flexibility in the areas that you need it most. Thank you.